worship. It's a joy to be worshiping together. My name is Chell Ferris. I'm the interim pastor here at Vista Lutheran, and uh, it's a joy to be worshiping together. It's good to be here. It's a beautiful morning. Um, a, a, just a couple of things. The hymn of the day, just with how everything fell, is, is on, the, on one of the back pages. So when you get there, it, it says it in there, but just kind of be aware. Uh, notice that. Also, uh, we got an, uh, Derek from Step, who is going to be here today, ended up, uh, he's not feeling well. And so we'll just reschedule, we'll get him here again. Derek is the executive director of Step, and so we're looking forward to, uh, to being able to hear from him about the amazing things they do in our community. So uh, we got a rain check, so uh, just so you know that, he won't be here this morning. And then also just to say welcome to all the folks that are joining us on video. It's, uh, it's great to have you with us. Um, as we begin our worship, I invite you to take a deep breath. As we breathe in, we breathe in God's mercy and God's love. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you to stand as you are able.
join with me in the prayer. God of passion, as Jesus took up the cross for all, creating a life and a legacy of love, may we too willingly take up our crosses. In doing so, help us seek to make the world a more trustworthy place for all people, manifesting our faith in our everyday lives. Grant us the strength to embrace the challenges that come with bearing our crosses, trusting that through our faith we contribute to a world infused with your love. Amen. Please read the bold print with me on Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my voice. In you I trust, O God. Do not let me be put to shame. Do, Do not, not let, let my enemies, enemies get, get the, the best, best of me. me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. It, it is, is the, the treacherous, treacherous who, who should, should be ashamed. ashamed. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from old from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me, for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Amen. Amen. According to the Gospel of Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of God must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at the disciples, Jesus said uh, to the disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any of you wishes to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and to forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of God will also be ashamed when, they, when in the glory of God the Father and the holy angels. Holy word of God, word of life. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to be seated. I have found that uh, life generally has to be lived moving forward, but it, it, it's generally only understood in reverse. This reading is the first of four weeks uh, that are meditations on Jesus' death. 
they focus on the cross, and that probably makes sense because we're in the season of Lent. Lent often is talked about as like a road to the cross. We think of it as a linear journey. But these stories uh, don't follow that straight line. These stories hold the cross and the resurrection kind of in tension. These stories of death and new life are not a linear journey. They're a cycle. And this is probably more how our lives work as well. Death and new life are held together. In today's reading, Jesus tells about his coming death and resurrection. Now, when we hear cross, we immediately think of Jesus' resurrection. It's, it's like they're, they're just tied together for us. Maybe our thoughts even jump to ideas like cross as triumph, cross as celebration. But let us all keep in mind that this is a leap of faith from death on the cross to resurrection can only be seen as a gift with the use of hindsight or as we look backwards in retrospect. The on we only understand death and resurrection as we look backwards. A and really, this has been true for about 2,000 years. This is the way it happened for Jesus' followers as well. Now, in the Bible, they are writing down what they knew already happened. The Bible is a retrospective. It's how they remember it. And one of the things that they record over and over again is how they didn't understand the cross and the resurrection's connection as it was happening, as Jesus was telling them about that. Then, after Jesus' resurrection, they see the cross in a different light. They see the joy. They see the meaning. Theology uh, are sort of telling about what we believe about God is always a retrospective. We say, this is how God was faithful in this time. We live life in forward, but we generally only understand it in reverse. So after telling about his coming death and resurrection, Jesus tells his followers to take up their cross and follow. Taking up our cross is not a glorification of suffering. It is not to say, suffering is part of being a follower of Jesus. Deal with it. Instead, the cross of Jesus has a purpose. Jesus even says that the cross is necessary. So what is the purpose? What is necessary about the cross? Well, Jesus' suffering isn't in general. He did not suffer to show strength or to, to show off. Jesus' suffering is particular. It's pointed. Jesus' suffering is with a purpose. Jesus is standing up to the powers of the empire that oppress the vulnerable and that take the advantage of those who have the least. Jesus stands up to the colonizing forces, the colonizing forces of Rome. To take up our cross isn't to choose suffering, but a choice to speak up against suffering. Taking up our cross is to live a life and to follow Jesus, 
standing up to empire and to the powers of oppression. Some might say, this is a lifetime taking up our cross. So, so speaking of taking up our cross, uh, uh, speaking kind of, of, of moving against suffering and following Jesus, let us use this cross-bearing metaphor to look at the interaction between Jesus and Peter. Peter responds, or it really says, Peter rebukes Jesus for foretelling his death, or for Jesus saying what it's going to look like for him to be Messiah, Peter rebukes him. Peter expected Messiah to look a certain way and to act in a certain way. In fact, the leaders of the, 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 the Jewish synagogue and the, the elders expected Messiah to look a certain way. See, they were in the midst of suffering under the oppression of the empire. Peter was oppressed under the colonizing forces of Rome. They expected the Messiah to be a military leader. They expected Messiah to be the oppressor of their oppressors. And Jesus comes into the world bringing a much different story. A story of power made perfect in weakness. That power is love. And we see that power in the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What things have we expected? What have we expected of God to act in a certain way like Peter was doing. I think back to my sermon from last week and how we as American Christians expected to stay with full churches and full pews and full bank accounts. And that picture has changed greatly in the last decade or decades. What might the Holy Spirit be working in the midst of these changes? How might, be God, how might God be calling us to be church? What does it mean for us to take up our cross and follow? Suffering like Christ, is to care for what some might call the least. Caring for others like Jesus did to pick up our cross and follow is to feed the hungry and to set the captives free. That is what Jesus did. Taking up our cross is not spiritualizing what's going wrong in our lives, it's to look outside of ourselves. Suffering, because we have taken up our cross, is often hard to imagine because suffering doesn't have a context. We need to be particular, pointed, and with a purpose. We need to ask ourselves and each other specific questions like, what does it mean to suffer because of poverty? Or, what does it mean to suffer because of illness? What does it mean to suffer because of violence or injustice? The sacrifice that Jesus 
is talking about is very particular. It has a face. It has a name. The cost we have to pay to follow Jesus is to be aligned with the most vulnerable in our communities, the most vulnerable in our country, the most vulnerable in our world. Picture that person. Who are they? Do we know a person's name that might fall into one of those categories? These are stories of death, of cross, and resurrection. They're not linear. They're cyclical, like how we live our lives. Death and resurrection, death and new life are held together. And Jesus comes into the world bringing a much different story of power, a power made perfect in weakness. The power of this love is what we see in the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is a love that empowers us in our suffering and empowers us to speak up and to act out against suffering. All while held by the love of Christ. Amen.
in Jesus Christ, who had lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are our God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Amen. The prayers of the people. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, during this season of Lent, we open our hearts to the needs of others. Inspire in us a spirit of generosity and compassion that our giving may reflect your boundless love. May our offerings be a source of hope and relief for those who face hunger, injustice, and hardship. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, guide us in moments of quiet reflection. Help us to ponder the depths of your love. Draw us in directions where we can grow and transform. In the stillness, may we hear your gentle voice directing us towards a more profound connection with you and our fellow human beings. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of justice, stir within us a passion for righteousness. As we fast from judgment and prejudice, may we feast on the values of justice and equity. Empower us to advocate for the world where all your children are valued and have their basic needs met. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Divine Comforter, as we engage in prayer, transform our hearts and minds. Make us instruments of your peace, agents of love and ambassadors of reconciliation. Both silently and aloud, we lift up all from this congregation and our extended community in need of prayer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for who we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Christ's peace be with you. or something. Good, good, good. I know, right? It's like, ah, this new world that we live in.
be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give our thanks, thanks and praise. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in. which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all people, saying, In this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as Jesus teaches us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite the congregation to be seated. Uh, you're invited to come forward as we, uh, we commune. Uh, there is uh, gluten bread. If, if, if you need that, just let your server know. And then the lighter color is the uh, grape juice, darker color is wine. And I invite all the folks that are joining us online to, uh, to gather some bread and wine or crapper, crackers and grape juice and uh, to join us in this time of communion. Most importantly, this meal is uh, prepared for us and hosted for us by Jesus Christ. And all are welcome at Christ's table. Amen.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace to life everlasting. Amen. And now we have a time of announcements. It's my first Sunday of remembering that, so I just kind of, it's a little victory. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm Jason Holt, uh, current council president. You can't get rid of me. Sorry for that. Uh, we have a prankster among us. Um, I, I like a good practical joke, but apparently Kurt Cousins was going to be the coffee cafe uh, donor today, and oh. he didn't show up. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, And also last week, I want to say Justin Jefferson didn't open the church. Uh, as much as I would like these uh, high-profile gentlemen to join our church, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I like a good practical joke. Judy does not. She is uh, <laughs> conducting a thorough handwriting analysis. There will be justice. Uh, uh, also, sorry, on a more serious note, uh, there will be no uh, step presentation after church, but there will be Coffee Cafe. I don't see her. Is Lynn... I want to thank Lynn uh, for stepping up with some fresh uh, Girl Scout cookie purchases. Ooh. Thank you, Lynn. I made the coffee. Uh, I will take compliments, not complaints. <laughs> so uh, on a, another great note, I want to thank uh, Mark Enige has uh, agreed to be the step liaison for this year, mm. and Christy Johnson will continue to be the liaison for Rise on 7 Daycare. Mm. All right, have I forgot anything? Uh, we are still trying to reschedule the chili cook-off. Uh, mm. Apologies for not, we, we're still looking for a date, so hopefully we can make that back. Yeah, okay. I think we're shooting for St. Patrick's Day for the chili cook-off. Yeah. It's a Sunday, so the 17th of March. The other thing, we're putting together, went Lenten dinner here mm. this Wednesday. We decided to do a baked potato bar. Ron has graciously offered to get the potatoes and bake them up here. We're just needing people to get the toppings and maybe a salad and some desserts. There's a sign-up sheet out there. Um, we haven't gotten everything written down, but if you're willing to get something and bring it here by Wednesday, I know it's short notice, please sign up, let me know, whatever. We'll, we'll get it figured out. We can do this. <laughs> Thank you. Seeing no other announcements, I invite everybody to rise for the benediction or the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Amen.
justice, love kindness, Jesus walks with you. Thanks be to God.